So, we related the time derivative of a vector in uh, an inertial frame of reference and a frame which is rotating with respect to this inertial frame. So, what we had some inertial frame of reference origin call it S naught and then there is some other frame which uh, rotates with respect to this with an angular velocity omega and angular velocity we wrote as a vector and the meaning is that uh, this vector is along the axis of rotation of the frame and then the direction on that axis whether this way or that way depends on how you are looking. So, if you are looking and you find that the frame is rotating anti clockwise then the omega is towards you and you find that the frame is rotating clockwise then omega vector is away from you. So, that is how we define this omega vector very very important in fact we will be using it extensively now onwards in this chapter and then in rotational dynamics also. So, this has to be understood. So, about this line the frame is rotating the other frame is rotating which we are calling S and this is the frame which we will, we will be using. So, this is very important because we, we are using this particular frame which is S and this S is rotating at seen from this inertial frame about this line with angular velocity omega. So, this is the situation and then we said that uh, if uh, a vector is uh, fixed in this frame suppose I take a point here and say that okay, this is the vector suppose this is the vector. So, wherever this x axis goes as x axis of this s goes this uh, vector will go together with it. So, that is that means it is fixed in s frame of reference or there is some other uh, point you can take and say that okay, this is a vector and not necessarily position vector alone any vector which is fixed in this frame. Uh, so, that one one can consider and if you call this vector A then we saw that in S naught frame this whole frame is rotating. So, this vector A which is fixed in this S is also rotating and that means as a function of time this vector is changing in S naught it is not changing in S it is fixed in S, but it is changing as a function of time in S naught and therefore, we said that dvt of A we have two things one is in frame S another thing is in frame S naught d a d t is 0 in uh, S frame it does not change with time it is fixed in S frame and it is rotating about this uh, omega as seen from S naught it is rotating about this uh, line and therefore, S naught this is not 0 and what this is that we found that it is nothing but omega vector cross a vector and if it is not 0 here if this a vector is also changing in S then the expression for this is this plus d a d t in S. So, if this is 0 this uh, drops out and uh, you just have this and if it is not 0 then you have to take care of this also. This is because of the rotation of this frame and this is because a vector is changing in that rotating frame also. So, when added together it gives you the time derivative of a in that inertial frame of reference. So, this is what we had done and now we will apply this equation for position vector of a particle. So, suppose this is now a point P and here is a particle of mass m mass m and this may be moving in uh, S frame of reference also this rotating frame of reference also. So, this is a position vector and to this position vector let us apply this. So, what do we get dr dt 
as seen in the S frame, S naught frame, as seen in the S naught frame is equal to dA dt in S frame. So, dr dt in S frame, rotating frame and plus omega cross r, omega cross r vector. This is what we get here. So, velocity, velocity of the particle in S naught is equal to velocity of the particle in S and plus omega cross r. So, now we will apply this equation on the velocity itself that means for this vector a I will be using this thing and that means this thing. So, what we will get d d t of this v s naught in s naught frame is equal to. So, this is the whole quantity this v s naught I want its d d t in s naught frame in the inertial frame. So, what do we have to do? We have to write this term. This whole quantity which I want to differentiate I have to differentiate in s frame. So, d d t of v s plus omega cross r in uh, s frame and then omega cross plus omega cross omega cross what this whole vector. So, this vector v s plus omega cross r this is equal to d d t of v s in s this is 1, then d d t of omega cross r and that is also in s, that is also in s and then plus omega cross v s and then plus omega cross omega cross r. Check d d t of v s in s this term we have written then d d t of omega cross r in s. So, that term we have written then omega cross v s that we have written and omega cross omega cross r that we have written. Now, what is this? What is this? This is acceleration of the particle as measured in s naught frame we have first found the velocity of the particle in S naught frame and then uh, we differentiated that again in S naught frame. So, very consistently we are trying to write the acceleration of the particle in S naught frame inertial frame. So, this is A naught A naught is what is A naught? A naught is acceleration of the particle in S naught and what is S naught? S naught is our inertial frame of reference. And this is equal to here this quantity is velocity of the particle as seen in the S frame and then we are also differentiating that in S frame. So, this is the acceleration of the particle in S frame. So, in S frame I am finding what is the velocity, how it changes with time and that is the acceleration. So, for this we will write A s. This is acceleration of the particle in S frame. Now, come here. We will take uh, the angular velocity of the frame with respect to inertial frame as constant. We can we can also write uh, the d d t of that also if the axis also changes or the speed also angular speed also changes. We can always write that uh, uh, d omega by d t that is not a big deal, but let us uh, practical cases most of the time we deal with situations in which this uh, rotating frame rotates about a fixed axis at a fixed angular speed. 
in that case this omega will be constant and so we will say plus omega cross dr dt in s dr dt in s but what is dr dt in s dr dt in s is just v in s in s frame okay we are differentiating the position vector in s frame and therefore we get the velocity of the particle in s frame this and then i have this omega cross vs here and we have omega cross omega cross r here all right this and this are same so you can put a 2 here multiplied by m everywhere mass of the particle 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 then what is this m and into a of s mass into acceleration okay and now i will be dropping this s because uh, now it's very clear that we are writing acceleration velocity everything in s frame in the rotating frame and here this is in the inertial frame so this m a is equal to m into a naught and a naught is acceleration of the particle in the inertial frame and therefore it is equal to the net force applied on the particle at that instant okay in inertial frame of reference i use i can use newton's laws without any hesitation force net force is equal to mass times acceleration here is mass times acceleration so this is the net force the, this is total force net force real all right in inertial frame there are no pseudo forces in inertial frame newton's laws are valid so f is equal to ma the net resultant force all the forces acting together take the resultant of that is equal to mass into acceleration so this we write f net and then minus because what we are writing this quantity so this minus everything so minus this quantity is m omega cross omega cross r this is it and then minus 2 times m and then uh, omega cross v and all these quantities are in s frame okay so that's it so in s frame mass times acceleration is not equal to the net force as expected as expected s frame is rotating with respect to an inertial frame of reference so s frame itself is non inertial newton's law will not well, uh, apply there so mass into acceleration is not equal to f net but then we say that okay we will put from our side some terms which look like forces and then we will say that mass time acceleration is this total force this total force so these are the pseudo forces that we have to supply from our side if we want to use newton second law in the non inertial frame in this case rotating frame once you add this then you are allowed to use all the techniques all the processes all the results of uh, inertial frames of reference now this quantity depends on the position of the particle this quantity depends on the position of the particle and this is known as centrifugal force now we are defining centrifugal force in the most general way centrifugal force this quantity is called centrifugal force and this quantity is called coriolis force so the forces which are actually acting on the particle they are all here and these are terms which are added to that uh, force to get this equation that okay mass times acceleration is this quantity which we can call total force and then use all that uh, inertial frame type results the important thing to note is the centrifugal force 
depends on the position of the particle not on the motion of the particle. A very common misconception is if a particle moves in a circle then you have centrifugal force m omega square r or m v square by r. Now, the centrifugal force has no reference to the velocity of the particle whether the particle moves, whether the particle is at rest, whether it moves in a straight line, whether it moves in a circle, whether it moves in an ellipse, whether it moves in a parabola, whatever the particle does, centrifugal force does not depend on that. Centrifugal force depends only on the position of the particle, where the particle is that will decide what is this centrifugal force, we will talk just now. Uh, but here, here the Coriolis force depends on the velocity of the particle. It is not depending on the position of the particle, it is depending on the velocity of the particle. So, this is the equation that we will be using. Our earth is a rotating frame of reference, we know. And so, we will be using this equation uh, for further discussion and examples and problems. So, keep this uh, in your uh, current memory mass times acceleration in the rotating frame is the real forces then a centrifugal force and then a Coriolis force and centrifugal force is m omega cross omega cross r and Coriolis force is minus 2 m omega cross v this is also with a minus sign ok. So, let us talk little bit more on uh, separately on centrifugal force first and then Coriolis force. So, let us say I have a, a frame which is rotating about this line with an angular velocity omega and let us call it z axis. And there is some origin here and you have a particle somewhere here at certain instant you have a particle here and uh, that is that is the position vector r. Okay, which can move in this frame your x y z axis are there and it, it can always move. So, whatever x axis y axis z axis is already drawn. So, you have x axis you have y axis and uh, this whole frame is rotating about this uh, z axis let us take this example or I can always choose my z axis along the axis of rotation and then x and y axis will be in perpendicular frame and this r may be moving in any way we do not mind we are talking of centrifugal force. It only depends on the position. So, at a certain instant the particle is here in my frame and then uh, there is the position vector that is it and we have to find what is this minus m omega cross omega cross r this is the centrifugal force. So, let me use cylindrical coordinate system ok. What is that? In cylindrical coordinate system the position of the particle is uh, defined so if this is z this is y this is x and here is the position. So, that position is defined in three quantities you drop a perpendicular from the particle to the z axis to the z axis why I have drawn this inclined type of perpendicular because the particle may not be in this uh, plane of the board z y z plane it can be outside the board or other side of the board and then you have to drop a perpendicular like this on the z axis. Now, this length is called s. So, your first coordinate is this s. What is the other coordinate? Other coordinate is phi. If you drop a perpendicular on this plane and uh, then uh, from the x axis how much is the angle that is called phi. So, if phi is more that means it is more on the other side. Hmm? Phi is 0 that means it is right here in this x z plane. So, that is how the and then this is z. So, this phi is the second coordinate and z is the third coordinate. Okay. So, if you have uh, uh, an axis and then uh, x axis, y axis, z axis and particle is somewhere here. So, on the z axis you drop a perpendicular 
and that length of the perpendicular from the particle on the z axis that length is called s and in that direction if you use a unit vector that will be written as s cap and phi means if here is the z axis the particle is here or here or here or here or here or here or here so that we define using phi phi equal to 0 will be just uh, above that x axis and then phi changes means I am going this way, I am going this way, I am going this way. So, that direction, so if I, if, if I draw a circle, remember this particle is not going on the circle. If I draw a circle about this, then uh, it will be this is phi, this is phi changing, this is phi changing, this is phi changing, this is phi changing, this is phi changing and so on. So, that direction is known as phi cap, unit vector in that direction is known as phi cap. Okay, and z is of course z cap, z is this. So, this is called z cap or k cap. This is how we define cylindrical polar coordinates or cylindrical coordinates and let us use that here. So, if I draw a perpendicular on this and this perpendicular length here is s and this vector is s cap, phi vector will be going into the board perpendicular to the board going inside and then we have uh, uh, okay, not going inside because I am taking this uh, point not in the plane, but then you draw the circle and, and that and of course, this uh, z cap is in this direction. All right. So, what is this r vector? This r vector can be written as this r vector can be written as this length which is z, you drop a perpendicular from the particle on the z axis and that origin to that point will be z, z coordinate. So, this is z in z cap direction, this is equal to z in z cap direction and plus this s in s cap direction. So, this vector is this vector here plus this vector here. What is this vector? Z in Z cap direction. What is this vector? S in S cap direction and therefore, you have R vector as this. And what is omega vector? Omega vector is omega in Z cap direction. So, what is this omega cross R? Omega cross R, this is equal to omega Z cap cross z z cap plus s s cap. Now, z cap cross z cap is 0 and therefore, it is omega into s z cap cross s cap and once again just like i j k you have the similar uh, relation you know i cap cross j cap is equal to k cap and all that. Similarly, here s cap cross phi cap is equal to z cap and similar things. So, s phi z in that cyclic order, I want z cross s. So, z cap cross s cap will be phi cap, just like you have a, a k cap cross i cap, this is j cap. You have i, j and k, s phi z, i, j, k, k cross i is j z cap cross s cap will be phi cap. So, this will be phi cap. So, it is omega into s and this is phi cap and then omega cross omega cross r omega cross omega cross r. So, this is omega and then cross this omega s phi cap and this omega is omega z cap. So, this will be omega square into s and into this z cap and cross phi cap. Once again phi cap cross z cap will be s cap and here I have z cap cross phi cap. So, opposite phi cap cross z cap is s cap therefore, z cap cross phi cap will be s cap so, minus s cap. So, this is minus 
omega square s and s cap. So, centrifugal force is minus m. So, this minus becomes plus m omega square s and s cap. So, what is the magnitude? Magnitude is m omega square s and what is s? s is the perpendicular distance of the particle from the axis of rotation of the frame. Remember axis of rotation of the frame not axis of rotation of the particle. Particle is not going in circle need not go in circle. Okay. So, s this s is the perpendicular distance of the current position of the particle from the axis of rotation of the frame which you are, you are using to describe the motion. And then s cap what is that s cap in that perpendicular on that perpendicular you draw a line which is going away so that is the direction that is the direction of a centrifugal force. So, we will take from here, we will take some examples of centrifugal force and then we will move on Coriolis force or the examples which are combining central, centripetal, centrifugal and uh, Coriolis forces.